this video is all about you. I love him so much. I want to break all of his bones. I want to squeeze him so hard. I love you. I'm getting cute aggression. I got to put you down. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I've been asked to film this video for honestly, probably the entire five years that I've lived in Chicago. And for some freaking reason, I've put it off again and again, like feeling like I wasn't an expert enough on having a dog in the city, even though I very much am a dog owner in the city. Today, I'm not procrastinating this anymore. And we are finally filming this video. And I'm going to tell you all of the tips for having a pup in the city. This is not Chicago specific. I will have some Chicago specific ones in here, but this really goes for anyone who is living in a big city and has a dog. So what I did was went to the wonderful world of Instagram and I asked all of my followers, what are their top tips for having a dog? The best way for me to go through this video is read you off the ones that they say, and I'm going to add my two cents and trickle my own little ones in here and there. So that being said, let's kick it off and I'm going to teach you all the things you need to know. First one up, I really like this one and it is build a care team, a boarding facility you trust, a vet you love, and backup sitters. I think that is really smart for anybody who is brand new moving to a city, these are gonna be the core things that you're going to need to find. Vet is a big one and there are so many different vets in the city. I have to shout out my girl, Bella Vet. Her name is Rachel, Dr. Coraville. She is a vet in the city and she's who I've brought Louie to. She's also one of my good friends. She specifically works at Boulevard Vet in Ravenswood. However, I have a bunch of recommendations from her in here as well, but I think that kind of just goes to show I have a vet who I hugely trust and that is very, very important when living in the city. Another one that wasn't listed in that comment, but somebody else brought up is your favorite dog park vet and ER vet. That is one that is extremely important and figure out your go-to ER vet before you are in a situation when you need an emergency vet. My sweet baby boy got bit over the top of his head this year and was bleeding out of his neck and his ear and it was horrible and traumatic and I don't wish that upon anyone, but we had to take him to an emergency vet at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning and I didn't know of one. I hadn't planned that part out. I had never had to bring him to one before. Luckily, I'm friends with a bunch of other dog owners in the city and I'm friends with Rachel and I was able to get recommendations for an emergency vet, but I highly recommend figure that part out before. This person in particular said, shout out to my vet animal hospital and med vet. Those are both great options. When Louis had his emergency, I took him to VEG, V-E-G. I don't actually remember what it stands for, but it's in Lincoln Park, partially because it was the closest one to me and also because we've known someone who had brought their dog there before. I'm trying to tie these comments into each other. So the next one, train them to be comfortable in a bag so that way they can be on the CTA. This is something that I hear time and time again of people aren't sure what to do when they don't have a car in the city. So if you do have a really small dog, like Louie is 10 pounds, I am able to bring him on the trains and buses as long as he's in a, I don't remember, I think on the CTA website, it refers to it as like a container or a carrier of some sort. So ideally he would be in like a container container. Sometimes I put him in a tote bag and they don't seem to have a problem with that because he literally is like the happiest little clam in a tote bag and I just have him sit on my lap. But it is nice being able to have your animal be very comfortable in transit, like whether it's in a container or not, but that really only applies to small animals. If you are somebody with a bigger dog and you need to transport them like whether it's to a vet or something like that, and you don't have a car in the city, don't worry. It is totally fine, very easy to work with. Uber does Uber pet. And so you can call an Uber, letting them know ahead of time that you are going to have a pet in the car. The person signs up for it knowing that that's the case. It makes me feel so much better knowing that in a pinch, I can call an Uber that's okay with having Louie in the car and take him anywhere I need to go. So when we did run into an emergency situation with him, I had that Uber called like before we were even ready to be out the door because I was like, I know we need to go to a pet hospital. I don't have a car. I need to get my baby there as quickly as possible. And it was totally fine. So rest assured, Uber Pet is very, very easy to use as well. One more while we're kind of on the theme of vets. The last one is make sure that your pup has a lepto vaccine. I get Louis vaccinated for, I don't know, Bordetella, lepto. What are the other things? I don't even know. I just know I do it. Very easy to do at your local vet. Or if you are looking to save a little bit of money and you don't want to go to the vet just for their vaccines, I've always gone to like vaccine clinics. Petco has them. Kreiser's, which is another pet store in the city, has them. It's basically where there's like a pop-up vaccine clinic that they do usually once a month in these different places. And it'll be for like two hours on a Saturday once a month, something like that. And it's really easy. You go in there and they'll have 
like a menu of all of the different like vaccines you can give them, but they also just have like a general package that's like rabies, your heartworm test, your lepto, your bordetella, and the other things that you're supposed to do as a good pet parent, I don't even know. But it's way cheaper. So you don't have to pay like the vet fee, you just have to pay for the vaccine. So that's what I've always done with Louie and it's been really, really easy. So if you're looking for something to save you a little bit of money, feel free to check out your local pet stores and see when they're having vaccine clinics on the note of pet stores, and nobody actually put this one into the comments, which I thought was really interesting. I get Louie's pet food delivered. Pet food bags are so big. <laughs> like, I don't know why pet food bags end up being like 50 pounds. I don't get him the 50 pound bags, that's just absurd. But I do get his pet food delivered. So we've used Chewy, I've used Amazon. He currently is getting fed Ollie, like the fresh food, cause he's bougie, as well as kibble. But those are really easy to get delivered to my house just because they're at minimum five pound bags and they go up from there. But just one less thing for me to have to lug home and like everywhere delivers pet food. So it's super, super easy to do. All right, this next one is going to be all about socializing your pet and having reactive pets, that sort of thing. So this first one is, if you have an anxious slash reactive dog, move to calmer parts of the city, it will help. I don't disagree to this. However, I do feel that if you're in the city, basically anywhere you go will have a decent amount of noise. There are parts of the city that will have less than others, but it also really does come down to like unit. I have a friend who lives in Lincoln Park and it's in a really pretty lovely, like a little bit more calm area than you would consider to be right downtown, but her windows are so thin that you can hear every single noise outside. And I do know that that has been a struggle for her dog. This other one says, we walked our dogs during less busy times, early mornings or later in the evening. That is definitely a really good one if you're trying to have your dog have a little bit of a calmer experience. Dr. Corville also said, keep them leashed in leash law parks. Yes, this even includes Lincoln Park. There are a lot of parks where it kind of becomes the norm to let your dog off the leash, even if it's not a like fully fenced in park. Figure out which parks these are. I don't disagree with her. There are parks that you are supposed to keep your dog on leash. And if that's the rule, just do it. So that way other people don't run into situations or you just, you never want to have your dog get into a conflict with another dog. It's truly the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Don't let it happen. But I would say like vet out your parks in your area and see what is kind of the norm. Because even if you're doing it right, if somebody else isn't, you're gonna run into an issue. So vet them out because you'll be able to get an understanding pretty quickly on which parks is it more of the norm there for people to let their dogs off leash versus which parks are people a little bit more like keeping their dogs leashed. In my personal opinion, I think the only parks that you can truly feel safe and comfortable doing off leash would be anything that's fenced in. Don't get me wrong. Have I brought Louie to Washington Square Park and let him off the leash because all the dogs do it? Yes, I have. But anything that's fenced in, like you just know for sure that that one is going to be a good official dog park. So we've gone to Kingsbury Park and River North a lot. There's Grant Park, which is the dog park in Grant Park. The one in Lakeshore East is absolutely beautiful. There's so many of them. You will have no lack of parks in the city. With that note, I also got the comments of there are so many parks and public spaces to take your dogs. Find pet friendly pumpkin patches. Also just how many parks we have for our babies considering Chicago being a big city. So yes, lots and lots of parks, tons of places to get your pup out. I think that that is something that a lot of people get really hung up on is the idea that I can't have a dog in the city. Like it wouldn't be able to get out. It wouldn't be able to run like it could in a yard. My little dude, we had a yard. He did not use the yard at all. If I was not in the yard, he didn't want to be in the yard. Even now when we go visit Alex's family, he wants to be where mommy is. And if I'm not outside, he does not care to use it. I truly think he walks so much more living in the city because we take him for long walks and there's just so many beautiful places for us to get out of the house. But when we had a yard, he did not care. He just wanted to be with me. I don't even know where he is. Is he upstairs? Is he, is he down? Is he in the pit? Oh, he's right there. He's laying on the carpet. He's so cute. Lastly on that one, Lapiel Laser Center, which is like my favorite place to get facials and stuff. They said, dogs do not need to say hi to each other. I lie and say that mine is not nice to avoid a bad interaction. I don't think that that's a bad idea at all. You just don't know what other dogs are gonna do and it can just be really scary. So I would say if you're ever nervous about that, much better to be on the safer side than not. I've had so many people tell me that their dog's not nice and they don't wanna say hi. And it's like, thank you so much for communicating that with me. I take absolutely no offense and I would rather keep both of our dogs safe. So always, always, if you feel more comfortable taking the safer route to do so. This one also says, not a dog owner, but I walk dogs and they should be registered with the city. That's super easy to do. Google it. I did it when I first moved. I don't even remember how to do it. I think all you have to do is put in their rabies number and let them know you have a dog and your dog is registered with the city. Very easy, very quick. Do I know why we need to do it? Honestly, no, but it was easy enough that I didn't mind. <laughs> this next one says, carry a water bottle with you on long walks for the dogs because some drink fountains don't work. This is true. There are a decent amount of water fountains 
problems throughout the city. Number one, they are not open year round. They do close when the temperatures get too cold. And number two, not all of them work. I don't know why, welcome to Chicago, but they don't. So it is very handy to be able to have one of those dog water bottles. I'll post a picture up here and I'll have an Amazon link down in the description box, but it's super easy to carry around and dogs really like it. My dog's really small, so sometimes I'll just fill my hands with water from my water bottle and he'll drink out of that. But I should just get one of those water bottles. I haven't done so, but I, I should. Other items, I don't like buying things in excess that I just don't need and I could find a workaround for, but this next one is very valid. And this says, doggy shoes to protect their paws on hot summer concrete or winter cold. And this one says, multiple pairs of HTO proof shoes. Dogs gotta go in any weather. Very true and very, very good to keep in mind. When I lived in Arizona, this was totally a thing. All dogs needed to be walked with shoes on in the summertime because the concrete literally will get to be like so hot, it'll burn their paws and it's so sad. But here, the thing that I've noticed the most in wintertime, it's not even like that the cold is so bad because my little guy is so small, we don't go for super long walks in winter. But the thing that is most worrisome for me is the salt. The salt that they put down on the sidewalks to melt the ice, although it is very handy, number one, it is very sharp and it can cut their paws, but the main thing is it's toxic. And so if it gets all over a dog's paws and the dog licks its paws afterwards, it can be poisonous to them and make them sick. And so doggy boots, all dogs hate them. They do get used to them, I promise. It is something that it's just better to be safe than sorry and get them little doggy boots. I have ones for my dog that feel like too rough and rigid. Like I feel like they're like actual snow boots. Whereas what I see most dogs wearing in the city is these kind, which look a little bit more, like they look like water balloons on their paws, but I've heard really good things and I think that dogs have an easier time wearing them. So I'm actually gonna buy those for my dog this year because this is the first time we've lived in a building where we don't have a dog run. And so I will need to walk him on the sidewalk to take him out to go potty. I just think that like the thicker ones that I currently have are too, like they're too stiff for him. He hates them. They also take forever to put on and off. Next one, if this wasn't a tip that you knew already, pick up after your dog. It's just so gross. You don't want to leave your dog's mess on the street. I have a little bag holder that's attached to the leash. There are a decent amount of like dog bag areas that the public puts out to be able to grab dog bags when you're on the go. But honestly, carry your own because you do not want to be in a pinch. It's like so embarrassing and it's just gross. Be a good dog owner, be a good member of society. Please pick up after your dog. All right. And last couple few are all kind of like bathroom and home base. This one is porch potties are so helpful if you're living in a high rise and you have a balcony. I do know that some high rises ban porch potties, so make sure that that is something that is allowed. I personally have never had a porch potty. Every building I've lived in has always had a dog run and so I much have preferred that because they just seem kind of gross. I don't know. If somebody has a lot of experience with porch potties, please comment down below and tell me if I'm wrong, but they've always just seemed a little icky to me, so it's never been the route that I've personally gone, but I can see it being extraordinarily helpful if it is is easy to take care of. On the topic of living in buildings, be careful in elevators, make sure that your pet is safely on the elevator and leash too every time. <sighs> okay, couple reasons why you need to be safe in an elevator. Number one, don't let your dog go like right up next to the door of the elevators, like where the elevator door is open, because if there's a dog on the other side and they scare each other when the door is open, that's how my dog got bit. It wasn't elevator doors, but it was a door all the same. Keep your dog back next to you when those elevator doors open, just because you don't know what's on the other side. But oh my God, the idea that my dog would be trapped on the other side of the elevator doors with the leash on, I've seen videos of that. My worst nightmare. That is my worst nightmare. My worst, worst, worst. Just be safe and be aware with your dog. Try and not be on your phone. Like keep your dog next to your side when you're on an elevator and everything's gonna be fine. No need to kick the stairs every time you can use an elevator. Just be aware. This one also says, we also lived somewhere with a dog run for quicker potty runs. Dog runs, that is the one amenity if I'm living in a rental building that like, that's my non-negotiable. I need a dog run. I think they are so insanely handy. A couple of reasons. One being the days when it's really, really bad weather and it's like sleet snowing outside. You don't want to go outside. Your dog doesn't want to go outside either. At least mine doesn't. And so being able to go to the dog run and being like, just go out really quick and then come back in and we're done. So, so, so easy. Highly recommend. The other thing is the middle of the night dog runs. If I have to take my pup out and it's one in the morning or something like that, and I've been out with friends, I don't wanna have to be walking the streets. It is so much nicer to be able to go to a dog run within my building where I don't have to leave to get to the street to take them out. It just makes me feel so much more safe, so much more secure. I know it's well lit. I know it's well taken care of. It's usually like fob entry or just not open to the public. I love a dog run. I will
will preach that to all of my pet owners out there. I think that that is one of the best things and really helped with us living in the city. I will very much miss having a dog run this year. All right, guys, I feel like I could go on with like a million more tips. Like actively people are still responding to this. So if I get a ton more, I might do a part two, but I do feel like this hit on all of my best tips right off the bat. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a little bit of insight. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down any other dog tips that you feel like I missed and hit that big red subscribe button. I post videos all about Chicago, downtown living, all the good stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.